How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I fancied finishing off the mission that was kind of a failure on uh, yesterday's live stream. It all went a bit wrong. The mud was just getting too mad. Uh, I didn't take a goddamn horse or a vehicle, so I ran out of fuel with the Navistar. Uh, yeah, for those of you that didn't see it, I was doing a uh, delivery to the weather station. So you got to bring uh, one set of small and one set of medium, uh, sorry, medium and long logs down there, and then also four planks. I got the Navistar pretty damn close, but as I said, I ran out of fuel. I had about 10 litres left. It was already spluttering. I knew it wouldn't make it. I ended up dumping the uh, Tager there, so they've already got the trailer each. Like One's got the medium. The Navistar's got the medium trailer, and the Tager's got the uh, the long trailer. So, yeah, I've got a, uh, a Tatran and a Loaf set up that I'm going to use to tow the Tager kind of down that way, grab some long logs. Um, as I said, the Navistar's near enough there already. So I'm going to use this again to kind of refuel it and uh, haul it up that last little hill because it was getting stuck on the rocks quite a bit. And then, uh, yeah, the last part of this mission is uh, deliver four planks. So I'm going to use a twin stair and I'm going to try a route that someone was mentioning the other day that, in theory, is kind of like one of the fastest routes across this map that it kind of cuts out most, if not all, of the, uh, the trollish mud sections. So, uh, yeah, give that a go, which I was hoping it would kind of be... A bit fast paced. I mean you can even see here the Tatrin is ridiculously good at off-roading, certainly in uh, pretty much all the other maps. There is the odd little exception but yeah for the most part it's just a solid beast like it's, uh, it's I believe it's got the highest like uh, tyre grip stats in the game, it's kind of got its own unique set of tyres. And uh, yeah even that thing I just had to drop it down into the low ranges just to get across that river which Again, if the river looked like a lot deeper and fiercer and all the rest of it, it sort of makes sense more, but realistically, when you see a vehicle like this struggling to even drive a couple of mile an hour through a river that doesn't even uh, go deep enough to, like, cover the tyres or anything, it's, uh, yeah, a little bit over the top, really. Speaking of over the top, of course, we've got to uh, cut through the farm section. There's not really... The only other way I could avoid this is by just going the really long way round, which I will be doing with the uh, the twin stair, and maybe, considering how much of a pain in the ass it was yesterday, slowly dragging the Navstar and the Tager through here, yeah, it might be best to go the long way. Like I said, after this, we'll uh, we'll see with the with the twin stair how that does. I mean, there at least it went a little bit deeper. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, um, yeah kind of looks a little bit more like it might be slowing me down a bit sort of has reason to. And uh, yeah, somewhere, there it is, just up here is the Tager. Like I said, for the most part, the uh, the Tatrin does haul along. There was a bit to the, kind of, behind me, to the left, uh, a swampy area that I drove the Tatrin into, and it absolutely got stuck to the point where it couldn't move. Even with its winch trying to pull it out of there, it couldn't move, so... Again, like, why the hell they've turned that section of swamp? It's pretty much where you've got to rescue uh, is it a GMC 9500 out of the water. Oh, sorry, maybe a, a Kodiak C70. And, uh, yeah, I mean, again, the probably the best base game off-roader couldn't even winch itself forward at half a mile an hour. So they seriously do need to uh, tone it all down a little bit. And, uh, yeah, of course, we've got to go that horse for vehicle with us. Spare fuel repairs, spare winch, all the usual, and just for, for good old times. It's funny, because driving through here was like probably the deepest section. The uh, the water actually was kind of well above my wheels there and going along the windows. That's one of the bits where I could kind of... It'd be reasonable if it slowed me down, but just the craziness of this game, I motored through there, no problem. And then, yeah, you get certain sections that are... Like... I don't know, probably less than 12 inches deep, and it, uh, it absolutely just nails you. Like I said, I certainly do like the Tatrin. I've always liked the Tatrin. I only don't really use it long term, because it's quite slow overall. I mean, at the minute, we're in auto. Uh, I believe it's in the top gear, but if not, we'll soon be in top gear. Yeah, this is about as fast as it goes, and obviously it helps make up in certain situations, because it also goes about this speed across practically every terrain in the game. Um, so it helps in that sense, but yeah, just for most situations, I I can uh, I can get stuff done quicker with other things. Obviously, the, a big thing that holds this Tatrin back is it's not even allowed trailers. So you know, trying to drop stuff off and everything, it doesn't let you do it and all. It's uh, yeah, 
sort of uh, sabotages its own usefulness in this game really. So I attempted now to swap these two around because I kind of figured I'd be able to get this one in high gear and I knew the uh, obviously the tattering would probably go a little bit slower but long story short this muddy section I'm still convinced at this point that the uh, devs have actually upped the ridiculousness of the muddy sections because I know for a fact that I drove through here multiple times when I first searched the actual uh, map itself I ended up cutting through here to go and get fuel from the station we just passed not too long ago and um, yeah I motored through there a lot easier and again the Tatrin's a pretty pretty decent solid truck and at some points it was uh, it was going so slow the tension on the winch wasn't even there like the Tatrin was driving as fast as the Taker so it wasn't even officially trying to pull that and yeah as you can see I, just, I soon gave up on that idea swung the uh, Tatrin back around and carried on towing the Taker which again the Taker's one of like easily considered one of the best trucks in the game. I've got the custom muds on it. I still think them in their own right could do with a little bit of a uh, yeah, a little bit of a boost, especially compared to stuff like you got the Tatrin with its uh, sort of unique set of tires that have got much better grip stats. But yeah, I'm not sure if they have altered someone in this matter. It was making me think the other day a little bit like. Um, some game companies have been like doing it recently. Uh, I believe Call of Duty is definitely guilty of doing this. I remember Crash Racing, like Crash Bandicoot Racing, when they released that, they kind of did a similar thing where they release it in one condition that's appealing to the player who's just paid money for it, and essentially they get good reviews off the back of it, and then they alter things afterwards. So. Um, yeah, Call of Duty and that Crash Bandicoot thing did it with uh, microtransactions. Crash Bandicoot said there will literally be no microtransactions in the game. You'll have to earn like these gold coins to buy certain things by racing in the game. A few weeks after they got all their good reviews and everything, they uh, yeah went back on their word and added microtransactions. Call of Duty, I know for a fact because I've seen it happen myself with... Um, was it Modern Warfare or Black Ops 4? One of them. Uh, yeah, they had no basically no DLC, and if there was the odd one or two things, I think one of them is essentially like a charity fund for uh, yeah veterans and stuff. So that's kind of that, that's fair enough, obviously. But then again, a few weeks after all the uh, good reviews came in, they absolutely hammered it with various DLC and like microtransactions, you know, weapons that now are better than anything you can get in the game so it's kind of it just turned it into pay to win and uh, yeah I'm not sure with this game if they kind of made this map a little bit more relaxed at the start because I certainly feel like I was having a much easier time driving around here for the first say week or whatever and uh, yeah the last couple of days it's just been an absolute nightmare so to the point where as I said next week's stream I don't know I'll have to try with the mods because it's not the mods themselves the mods have been fine but as I was saying, if I uh, live stream and I get blue screened with all my mods on, I don't know if that'll just cut the live stream or what. But there's uh, there's also the other thing that it was making the menus really slow. It was also for some reason my down button on the D-pad was not always working. But it's not the remote that was broke. It was just when I had all the mods on, it was like sometimes yeah, you just had to sit there and keep mashing a load of buttons until it eventually started working again for no apparent reason. So. Interruptions like that would not be good in a live stream situation. Obviously, when I'm editing a video, I can just cut out the sections where it does that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, I was a bit rambling there, but when I got down to the farm, instead of following the uh, kind of lines that I'd already drawn, I decided, as I have got the Tatarin, uh, to cut across like the mud bogged farm. And uh, yeah, I could see effectively a much shorter route that was cutting up here. You can kind of see the path I was originally going to take. Um, yeah, to this logging station to grab some large logs. And not only that, but for anyone who did see yesterday's live stream, I drove to this log station with the Navistar, but I essentially drove in the other way, and then I drove out the other end, and it ended up being across some rocks that were a complete troll. Almost got stuck. T took me like five minutes just to travel, you know, a couple of truck lengths just to get back out of there. So looping around this way, I'm already facing the, uh, the Taiga the other way. Because essentially what I was going to do is bring this in here, get the logs, and then have to turn the truck around anyway. Because there was no way I was uh, leaving the same way I did with an Avastar. Because again, uh, yeah, they just went over the top <laughs> with it. It's like too many rocks, etc. And uh, that's what I've been saying, and others have been saying the same. Is They're going 
too over the top on certain points of this map where it just makes you think, right, that, that's just a no-go zone that I'll always avoid. So, yeah, all their efforts to up the difficulty is just sort of been wasted because it's like that'll just be a place where <laughs> little to no one will ever even drive there again. So uh, anyway, it was pretty smooth sailing up to this point, though. The Tatrin's doing pretty well. It's, uh, it hauled us across the farm, got us up that hill pretty nicely. There was no... Well, not too many. I did see a few tree stumps, but nothing too crazy. As I've said, I wouldn't mind the tree stumps or the rocks as much if the game gave us some kind of solution to them. The fact that they add things that you just can't do anything about is, yeah, a bit of a pain. Like I said, it'd be a bit like if a shooting game, if they added some soldiers into a shooting game that can't be killed and all they do is shoot you, it'd just be like an annoying part of the game. Like, give me something to kill them back and then <laughs> and then we'll talk, then it's fine. But just having stuff in the game that holds you up that you can't do anything about is, uh, yeah. Seems to be the typical trollish nature of some of the devs. I think they like... Uh, Pushing the look with some of the things. It's getting a little bit iffy down there. It's a little bit hilly and dodgy here, but to be fair, the Tatarin, one nice thing about it is weighted like a, was it a weevil wobble? Where, yeah, you near enough have to tip the thing. You can have an unlucky bounce every now and then with the Tatarin, because the, uh, the suspension can be a little bit springy and it can ping it over. I think I have got the autonomous winch on the Tatarin for that reason, because. There's a few times I've rolled it, but yeah, all things considering, as far as just leaning on a hill, it, uh, it's pretty hard to tip. And again, it's doing a pretty good job of uh, holding that thing up. Plus, I've got the custom muds on the Tega, which, um, yeah, I do feel like they kind of... They widen your wheelbase for a start, but they just feel like they add more weight lower down on the Tega, which also helps that with tipping, which was nice, because I would have been slightly disappointed <laughs> if it tipped. I'd now have to go and get something with a crane. I've not really felt too well tonight, to be honest. I don't know why. I woke up feeling alright, but you know that sort of feeling when you know you feel like you're getting ill? It kind of felt like that. I don't know if I am getting ill or anything, but I just started getting like a headache, just not, not feeling good. So I didn't want to do a particularly uh, massive mission tonight. And yeah, considering I did abandon this mission yesterday, which normally once I get started on a mission, I like to crack on and finish it, but it was just making the stream too slow and like boring for my liking to be honest it was uh yeah driving me mad how slow the pace was so where did we end up going oh yeah to white valley delivered some logs there which a little bit of that was slow pace as well getting towards the uh the sawmill but certainly a lot smoother than uh some sections on this map and we got like two lanes leading up to the uh the weather station here i originally went up like the right hand lane as you're sort of approaching it now with the uh, the Navistar. I'm going to go up the left-hand lane with this Tager because, or well, one, the Navistar's in the way at the minute. But yeah, there was a lot of rocks. It was pretty uh, trollish trying to pull it up that section. The Navistar was not far off stuck. And if I had enough fuel in the Navistar, I probably could have made it to the top eventually just because there's enough trees sort of either side of me that I could have winched to something and just kept zigzagging my way up. But, well, you can see even here they've... Uh, yeah, made it a little bit crazy. Which, like I said, if there was a way to get rid of the rocks, I it wouldn't bother me that they're there because it'd just be part of like the mission, sort of clearing out an old disused uh, pathway to the to the weather station. But I mean, maybe you could pick some rocks up with that new uh, logging crane. But it, either the, whatever effort you go to, as soon as you uh, change the map or whatever and load this map back up, all the rocks will be back to the same position anyway. So. It's a bit of a uh, fruitless endeavour. Thankfully, this last section, well, there is a couple of rocks I think we get a little bit hooked on, but for the most part, they calm down a little bit. And this does catch me out a little bit with the uh, Tatarin quite often, is particularly when you're bouncing over rocks and stuff, it lifts your front end up, which is your steering axles, obviously, and then you kind of get rotated as you hit rocks. I couldn't really help that it just kind of veered me to the left there. I ended up having to do a bit of reverse. It's nothing too crazy, but again, when you're in certain iffy situations, particularly if you have got like a dolly trailer situation, at least this long log setup is more like just a traditional trailer. 
but yeah, you can uh, end up just having to reverse a little bit. You can sort of end up tipping your cargo and making things a a whole lot more of a pain in the ass. But fortunately, things went pretty well again. The Tatarin, to its credit, has uh, done pretty solid on this mission. <laughs> That's a little bit like the caravan I used to live in. <laughs> not quite the same, but not far off, similarish size. It's pretty good. Well, the main thing was uh, cheap rent, <laughs> dirt cheap rent compared to running a house. So uh, yeah, that's the Tager done anyway, long logs done. As I said, fortunately the Navistar is only just down here, so that's nine tenths done already. <laughs> Eyeballing that rock. I knew that was big enough to wedge me up. I was hoping it didn't roll all the way down the gully to like at least here where it would now yeah, do its very best to be blocking me. A little bit of a tighter turning circle would be nice on the Tatran as well, <laughs> I suppose, if we're uh, chucking out a wish list of things. Loaf donated some fuel. Again, I should have. If I just took a loaf with me originally, we would have uh, at least made this part of the mission successful. I still don't know. I probably would have ended up bailing on the mission. But certainly when I got to this point, and yeah, this thing was uh, running out of fuel, it was just like. Abandoned mission. Let's call it a day on that one and we'll uh, move on to something a little bit. A little bit more free flowing and, uh, yeah, actually see things happening. Certainly pretty steep climbing up here, though. Overall, it wasn't too much of a bad mission, though. It's not the mission that I dislike. I like doing all this kind of stuff. It's, uh, yeah, it's the worst bit, really, is that farm, for the most part. It's just sort of eye rollingly boring. <laughs> As you squeeze the throttle and slowly drive through it. I think again, yeah, I was hooked on something. Oh yeah, I think there is I think this is the rock. And then again hooked on. Looks like a little one there, but as I reverse. There's a pretty meaty one. Definitely meaty on the uh on the rock scale. Yep. <laughs> close one but we're getting there again at this point thank god the uh, the Navistar was nine tenths here although as I was saying the Navistar has been driving th this quite a bit on this map for the last uh, week or so however long since the map come out and I've always found it was doing pretty solid for some reason with this mission and last night it just felt like it had, uh, had half of its engine power taken away or something which I'm pretty sure it hasn't I don't know what the situation was but it certainly didn't feel like the uh Classic Navistar, <laughs> trying to just nudge the Tager out of the way, but of course, the uh, the Tatran's kind of got like a ramped front end, which is handy for a lot of situations, but not when you're trying to nudge your vehicle out of the way. Now, I think we might be bloody caught on the caravan. <laughs> it would have just ripped the entire back wall off in real life. I'm not sure if those portal loser. I don't think you can knock them over either. I was ho tooting my horn when I was near them to see if I could sort of make them jump. That's when you kind of know if they're movable. Anyway, yeah, that is uh, medium logs done. So, next up is the twin steer, which, like I say, I was kind of hoping this would be a bit of a fly-in section. Hence, part of the reason why I brought the twin steer, it also means I don't have to uh, take a trailer back or anything. But yeah, four planks, and I'm going to use the like left-hand lane climbing up there, the way I did with the Tager rather than the Navistar, because... Overall, I know I had a well. I suppose the Tatran was pulling both of them. That left-hand lane just felt a lot, lot better overall. That one that I just took the Navistar. It was a bit of a harsh, bit of a harsh mistress. So uh, yeah, again, got the uh, twin steer. I've got the raised suspension on at the minute. Uh, the 63-inch tyres, so they certainly help the speed. I'll be in high gear for most of it, but while I was going along here, managed to get it up into the uh, the auto. It's about now, yeah. 
Which it makes you wonder when you're literally going downhill and the game somehow still slows you down. There are, uh, yeah, we do need to calm down. And obviously there is always mods that are the solution, but there's quite a lot of base game vehicles that I like using. On top of that, there's other vehicles that I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to say they're my favourite, but for the sake of variety and stuff, I kind of like mixing and matching the different trucks. And particularly the worst, the more trollish they make a map, the kind of... they eliminate 80%, 90% of their base game trucks as a possibility, because it'll just... You know, bringing something like a, like a white western star, if that thing was hauling logs. As I like the truck itself. Um, yeah, I just don't think it'd do too well on a map like this. Not the base game version, anyway. And, uh, yeah, instead of going, like, through the water to the railway station, I kind of turned left at the, uh, the fuel station, cut along. Before I got to the bridge, though, swerved it. It's kind of where I rescued the Hummer from, uh, that was a bit of an adventure in its own right yesterday. <laughs> I was having quite a lot of fun at that point though, just messing around with me dolphin and loaf. Um, yeah, cut across there. So like I said, that cuts out that water section that can take minutes to cross. Uh, cut along here. I could have gone straight ahead now and then followed the road down, but I remember there was that patch that I got stuck in with the boar and the P512, so scoot it round here. However, clip my wheels on the edge of the uh, train tracks, that flipped me over. And you see, if I had a goddamn horse over vehicle with me, It'd be straight off there now, flipping the back, and we'd be going. Fortunately, I just saved the footage, quit the game, reloaded it, and it reloaded me, like, back up there a little bit. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> attempt number two. Took it a little bit easier around there. But, yeah, following these train tracks down, I'm still in high gear at the minute, which is nice. I probably could have stayed in high gear now. I purposely kind of let off and slow down, because what I was hoping not to do is delete my suspension, because once the suspension's gone, it'll start nailing the, uh, the fuel tank. And then, yeah, then it's just like a ticking, a ticking clock before you're out of juice, and that's the end of it. And again, if I had a horse with me, he'd have repairs, he'd have that situation handled. See, it's situations like this, though, where I like the twin stair, even though I turned a little bit late there, got pretty slow with slipping on the rocks, but keep it pinned, fingers crossed, and the high range is definitely, uh, or the high gear is, yeah, it's got some serious power with the twin stair, so it still managed to motor its way up there. So it took a few trolley shits there. It's funny how out of any section that looked relatively uh, smooth, but that man oh that did actually delete the suspension. Like I said, now it's a little bit of a uh, yeah. It, the next thing that gets hit is the fuel tank. However, in not very long at all, really, a couple of minutes, and uh, we're already at the sawmill. Which is pretty nice. So that the way I just used then basically cut out, as I said, that river. Uh, sorry, the lake section getting to the railway. But also, if you just follow the main road down to the sawmill, there's like a massive swampy patch you got to get through, and then just after that, there's like a ridiculous super mud patch. Uh, yeah, it kind of cuts all that out. And I probably got here in less time than it takes to drive through that swampy trollish patch. So. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it, whoever it was who showed me the uh, kind of the best route to cut those out. I give it a go, and uh, yeah, I concur. <laughs> I can confirm. It's pretty decent. Grab a bit of fuel while we're here, because I had a feeling at some point I may end up deleting the fuel tank accidentally, of course. But like I said, there was a combination between... I want to try and preserve the uh, truck if I can, but... Yeah, I don't really fancy cruising along as in a low range or anything. I wanted to drop the hammer and uh, get flying across the map. Get this mission in the bag. Oh, and it has took a hit now. The fuel tank goes, so yeah, it's basically a countdown clock now. I think it was on about 350 litres uh, when I damaged it, so... Well, yeah, counting down from there, basically. So, at this point, the good news to that, though is now there isn't really anything left to damage, or not that I really care about. I suppose eventually I could blow a tyre, but for the most part, it's uh, it's not really going to take the engine or gearbox out very easily. So, yeah, now I really can drop the hammer and kind of throw all caution to the wind and go flat out. The only thing I'm trying to avoid is not tipping over. However, part of the good news of the suspension collapsing is that lowers me down, which kind of lowers my centre of gravity. 
helps quite a lot with not tipping. And I still get my 63 inch tyres, so yeah. All in all, I call it a win. So cutting across here, I tried to just go straight instead of going diagonal, because obviously you got more water to wrestle through. And it was going pretty well, it was wrestling its way along. I tried to get over to the left a bit to get some of that grassy patch, sadly, at the last couple of rocks on the rear tyres. Finally got me. I had to drop it out of high range, which, again, at this point, with the, uh, the fuel ticking down, I really could have done with that. If it just made it a little bit further, I would have been able to, uh, yeah, haul my way up this hill a lot quicker. That might have cost us the game. <laughs> well, again, worst case, I mean... As long as I can get pretty close to the weather station. I know I've got the Tega, the Navistar. I've got that Mahorsa vehicle and a Tatra in there, so... All in there in my head. I just need to get this thing, yeah, as close as I can. And I'll be uh, pretty happy. And again, originally, I... Normally now, you can sort of go left as a shortcut or right, and I was going to loop round. I was going to go right because of tippiness. But, uh, yeah, now the suspension's lowered and the fuel is tipping out. I decided at this point to ignore the uh, the route I drew. And I'm actually going to cut across here. Because again, that's going uphill to the right, which means I probably wouldn't be able to get into high gear yet. Whereas I knew, although it was a bit risky, I'll be able to tap L1, get into second gear, drop it into high about now. And yes, it went pretty well. We're back in the, uh, the high range, motoring along again, trying... That was a bit of an iffy bounce. But you see, the just plenty of power in this. It's why it's always been quite an enjoyable truck to drive. Get over to the left, try and get to that grass before we uh, bump over too many rocks and lose our speed. Got a little bit <laughs> a little bit happy there. Oh, we blew a tyre as well, but it's all good. Plenty of tyres on this. Looked like we might tip there. I know I hit the rock, but I wasn't worried about that. It was the tipping I did not want to happen. I don't even know what we winched to, but I fl flung a winch out. <laughs> it seemed to do something. The other day I got stuck in there pretty bad. Well, not the end of the world. I was able to winch out of it, but it near enough stopped my truck dead. So yeah, scooting around to the left of that seemed to work pretty well. Allowed me to stay in high to motor my way up here. I was thinking at this point, like, oh no. <laughs> this is where drawing the lines is quite nice. Although I am to a degree. The more you don't draw lines, you kind of force yourself to learn, pay attention to uh, what's going on and which direction to go. But yeah, we're basically now coming up to the, uh, the brick factory. We've already got an ANK here just from the other day when I drove down to see what I need to build bricks. And I thought, well, while I'm here, don't mind if I do, I'll sneak a bit of fuel out of him. Much obliged. I'm on the way again, so yeah, that gives us a little bit of a boost. I think we were back nearly to 250 fuel, was it, or something? So, yeah, <laughs> it's a good start. Getting pretty close now, sort of coming up to uh, probably around the quarry kind of level. Could have done with turning like the other way left, however. A bit risky, but flung a winch out, hit that tree, that kind of tightened up my turning circle. Flung my nose round, so I was able to leave it in high range. Again, this has certainly turned into like emergency plank delivery, <laughs> since we're on a countdown timer. Oh, there's the quarry to me right. I would like to change it to daytime, but again, I kind of... That'll cost me my, uh, my high range gear at the minute. Scoot over to the right of that. I don't think that section is as bad, but still, I wasn't risking it. It's funny, though, on this game, when you think about it, there's roads, and quite often it's better to not go on the road. <laughs> so, left or right, I could have gone. I should have gone left. Sadly, <laughs> I chose the wrong way. I started driving towards the gateway. Got to here, I was like, God damn it. That may have cost me the mission. <laughs> or at least as far as getting there with the uh, the twins there. Just cut a little bit out with me reversing down that road for like 30 seconds. I've decided now, since I've lost my, uh, my high range privileges, we'll get that sunlight back out. Soon get it back into high though. Again, that's what I do like about it. Plenty of power. As soon as it goes into second gear, pretty much, you can ram it in high and. Yeah, for the most part, unless you're going up a steep hill or something at the time, it kind of listens to you and lets you get away with it. 
say sometimes no suspension is the best suspension. <laughs> Certainly not smashing me to pieces. And uh, yeah, we made it here. These are the two lanes. Like I said, I'm going to go with the left-hand lane because I think that right-hand one was just a bit too excessive. Well, they kind of both are to a degree, but it's probably the least most excessive of the two. Yeah, I'm trying to stick a winch on the tree to tighten the uh, turning circle again. That'll do. It was enough. Better than doing a, a three-pointer. Or rather more time-saving than doing a three-pointer. Looking good though. What are we down to about 50 litres I believe. Unless I was desperately uh, tapping L1 at the minute. Hoping as soon as I see second gear. If I can drop it in high. That's kind of my last ditch attempt. Could have done with it about yeah, a couple of seconds ago really. But I know this one <laughs> like twin steer length of downhill section there. Got it in second, bang it into high. And uh, yeah, we got away with it. And it was looking pretty good, we're motoring up here. And sadly, I think I get the concept of like making it splutter with fuel when it's low, but in reality, I had about 20 litres in there when it started spluttering. Nothing's going to start spluttering with 20 litres left in it. And I get that, yeah. It'd be pointless to make it start sputtering at one litre or something, but still, they could make it at like five to eight litres or something, it starts doing it. Twenty litres was like, if that if the spluttering mechanic didn't exist, I actually think I could have uh, just about brought it home then. But as well, if I didn't take that wrong turn and go to the uh, entrance to, what's it called, Grainwoods, then uh, I probably would have had enough fuel as well. Fortunately... Sent in the Tatran and the horse. <laughs> Again, tried to nudge the uh, the Navistar out of the way, but it's about to flip me. Stuck a winch on it, so it kind of starts reversing by itself. Clear a path. Of course, it wouldn't reach. Again, I've definitely got the uh, the autonomous on this because the winch distance there is pretty pretty low. There we go. Job done. Jump in that. Drop the wood off. And that is a, uh, a weather station. Successfully sorted, finally. Only took half a live stream and <laughs> a night's worth of making a video. Less than 10 grand as well. I thought it was a little bit stingy on the money, considering I had to bring medium logs, long logs and four planks. Um, yeah, and of course, goddamn horse of a vehicle. Knew he'd come in handy. He uh, repaired and refueled the twin steer. Not that I really need it anymore, but again, the loaf has set a high standard that he needs to upkeep. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today, though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for our Patreon members. And I'll be back soon.